So this video is going to show you how to create a knowledge base article in Team Dynamics and submit it for approval. So one thing to note, uh, when you submit a knowledge base article, it will not automatically be published for um, individuals in our district to view. Um, we have an approval process, and so it'll be submitted for someone to then review it to provide any necessary feedback, um, if there's any feedback to be given, and then once that person feels it's ready to be published, it then will be published to Team Dynamics. So to create a knowledge base article, number one, you need to go to Team Dynamics, that's tdx.canyonsdistrict.org. You're gonna log in using your CSD credentials, so what you use for Skyward, for your email, and then I'll demonstrate this piece, but you'll click on knowledge base, you'll click on a, an add new article button, um, I'll talk about what to, what you do if you don't see that. And then I'm going to reference this checklist. It's our knowledge base article style guide and um, directions. So I'm going to, oops, step one, go to tdx.canyonsdistrict.org. Now I'm already logged in, but if you're not logged in, you'll see a login button in the upper right hand corner. Once you're logged in, click on Knowledge Base, and you can click on it here in the blue bar, or you can click down here where it says Search Knowledge Base. Either way will take you to the same location. Uh, next step is to click on the Plus New Article button. If you don't see this option, it means your permissions have not been updated in Team Dynamics to allow you to what we call author a, an article in the Knowledge Base. So you'll want to contact, uh, for now, let's contact me, Camille Cole, so camille.cole at canyonsdistrict.org, and I can communicate with IT and work on getting you the right permission. Once you see the new article option, click on that button. And then this is where using this checklist will support you in the rest of, like in the actual creation process. Um, it goes through things to think about, things to add, um, some font requirements, font sizes, what to do for headings, um, how to add tags. So when you're doing a new article, you just start from the top and go to the bottom. So you will identify the category. If you're not sure what category to um, select, depending on the department you might be in, uh, talk to your department's contact, like one of your supervisors, and they can help identify the category. Um, I would just skip the order, don't worry about that today. And the subject is the title. One thing we want to avoid is having every knowledge base article start with how to. So we actually recommend that you don't have like how to add an article to the knowledge base or how to use Canvas to support feedback cycles. Just start with what this article is going to be about. So the one that I had you guys look at was adding an article to the knowledge base. Um, with the body, we actually have templates for you to choose from, so you're not starting from scratch. So where it says templates, you're going to click on templates. The two I'd recommend to use is the how-to article style guide. This, the difference is here, this middle section will say instructions. It's more for technical step-by-step -step directions that you're adding. Or the second one, how-to informal article for ISD you'll see where the difference is implementation. So thinking about the type of article you're adding, are you providing specific instructions or are they steps for implementation? And then here, the only items you have to adjust is where it says overview. Keep your overview to two to three sentences, but it should give a good introduction so someone knows it's more than this article is going to do blah, blah, blah. That can be at the last sentence, but you should still start with like, what is the knowledge base? Why are, you know, what is the knowledge base all about? Just kind of like what I did for my example. And then for the steps, you want to do, if you have written directions, um, bullet, like bullet your steps. You want to be very clear, succinct. Um, and maybe even after you do this, I'd actually recommend following your own directions to see if they make sense and that they actually do what you want to do. You want to think you're about your end user's experience. Never assume they're going to know what you're talking about. And then with the additional resources, if there's any um, slide decks, videos, um, additional learning resources that you can direct your learners to, 
Um, with the point of this being it's very bite-sized, it's in their face, some quick implementation or instruction steps that they can scan through and follow. The article summary, this could technically be a repeat of what you did in your overview. You want it to be short and sweet. This article summary actually appears when someone's searching. Um, I'll show you. It looks like... <clears throat> So when I search the like canvas, this is what that is. So that is the article summary. And then when you're adding your tags, you want to add whatever words you think your user would use. Um, when I was learning from Team Dynamics, they recommended, so like if I was doing knowledge base, like knowledge would be one word, base would be another word, and then I could actually put knowledge base together. We don't have a limit, at least, well, I guess my limit would at least be one, one tag, because you want to think when someone comes up to this search menu or search search bar, what word could they possibly type to um, come up with, you know, or search for your article. Your status will be submitted, and this is where I think sometimes my view and your view can be slightly different. Um, I will, you won't be the one who will be able to approve it. You'll just be submitting. So there's a good chance when you get to this part, you don't have this option, and that's okay. If you are asked to choose any of this, just do submitted. Keep this box unchecked. You actually shouldn't be able to select it if you have submitted. Your next review date, um, due for now, June 30th, 2024. Um, if you're watching this, June 30th, 2024, or after the fact, um, we want to keep our review dates like within the next year. Um, so more information can come as we continue to add things to our knowledge base. Uh, keep yourself as the owner unless you know you're not the owner of this article. Um, you can actually add more than one. This allows us to um, identify who to notify when there's feedback. You can actually check the box if you want to notify, be notified about feedback if someone leaves a comment like this was a helpful article and here's why or it was not a helpful article. Um, but I will at least make sure it's at least one owner and it's someone who, when it comes for that review date, can be an individual <clears throat> responsible for updating. And then when you're done, you're going to click save. Now, something with the knowledge base article, and I'm actually going to go here, there's two options that you can do that aren't easily noticeable when you're creating your knowledge base article. You don't see it the first iteration. There's a way for you to adjust permissions, and there's also a way for you to connect related articles or um, services. And the services are connected to IT and their ticketing system. So if you're someone who you want to say this article is only available for instructional coaches or specific schools or maybe school-based administrators, or maybe there is, I have other like Canvas articles I want to connect. Um, to access the permissions and the um, additional services, like be able to connect other articles. You have to edit the article. So you have to do an initial save, go to edit article, and then you'll see where permissions is where I can go. Because um, right now it's just public. Anyone who has access to our team dynamics can find the articles. Um, if I uncheck this inherent permissions and uncheck public, this is where I can identify allow only the associated groups or allow all individuals to view this article. So I'm more than likely, if I only want a specific group, click on that radio button, and then you'll see the different groups we have in our system. If you have any questions about this, Rick Sheath in IT is a good contact, or Sharon Simmons, they can talk you more to more about this option. And when you've done this, you hit save. Um, another option, if I go back into the edit article option, the related articles and related services, this can help me find other articles or the IT services that are already in Team Dynamics. So knowing that I have other Canvas options, if I click on related articles, you click on the add button, I can start typing in Canvas, or if you know what you're looking for, you can type in the title, and I can identify, and this will show me what's been added. And so if I say, this is actually an article that I want to be viewed on the side of my knowledge base article. So Someone who comes here might say, oh, I also need to learn this as well. It's a quick link to another knowledge base article in Team Dynamics. I just select it, click Save, and then it will link. And this will show me, and you can, always, you can add more than one. 
if I decide, oh, I didn't actually want that added, I can click on remove and remove it. And the related services works the same. You just click add. You can type in um, some keywords, find what you're looking for, select and hit save. If you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out and 